my brothers and sisters and my beloved confreres today we are celebrating the great feast of pentecost the birthday of the church i wish each one of you a spirit filled experience of the risen lord who has ascended to the side of his father and he has sent his holy spirit as a helper and a benevolent person of accompaniment may the spirit of god bless each one of us as all of you know the very term pentecost comes from the greek root pentecoste which means 50th according to the rabbinic tradition the 50th day was a day of mem- memory and commemoration the people of israel after the passover at the time of a harvest festival which was conducted on the 50th day celebrated their life in the new spirit that was given by yahweh and in the christian tradition is an expression of the 50th day after the resurrection of jesus the spirit of god comes to us today through that breathing of jesus to give us a new life peace joy and the ministry of apostleship i welcome all of you to this experience of the pentecost my brothers and sisters we are reminded today of the accompaniment of god's spirit in our life jesus is depicted today by john the evangelist as the one who comes into the lives of his people you may sometimes think the inauguration of the church means just today the spirit came is in fact not the truth jesus in fact had been giving his spirit his spirit filled the life to everyone who encountered him from the time of the incarnation until now till his ascension to the right hand of the father how did he come to his disciples now john the evangelist through the gospel today would tell us through the closed doors he came that means the presence of christ that is given to us through the pentecost is no more the earthly physical presence of jesus instead it is the glorified presence of jesus jesus who is beyond the control of space time earth and velocity we have the spirit of christ accompanying each one of us every day of our lives we need to realize the joy of it in our life what did the risen christ tell his apostles peace be with you peace is freedom from disturbance is a tranquility that has to be experienced by everyone jesus the lord gives his peace not only at this time after his resurrection but from the time of the incarnation peace was the message of jesus you would read in the gospel of luke chapter 2 verse 14 jesus is giving his peace through his angels when he was born the angels appeared to the shepherds and told glory to god in the highest and peace on earth who glorifies him people of good will this is exactly the call that we have to experience the tranquility and the peace of christ which is given to us time and again by jesus the risen lord we also see this peace coming to us through his farewell discourse as all of us know chapter 14 to 17 of the gospel of john is jesus farewell speech he is preparing his disciple to see and experience things that they have never experienced in their life in his chapter 14 verse 27 jesus tells to his disciples do not let your hearts be troubled do not be worried i leave you my peace the tranquility the freedom from disturbance 
that the risen Christ gives to each one of us is something that we need to experience. The presence of Christ is something that can make a difference in your life. I wish this presence is to be taken with that sense of peace. In our communities, in our families, our presence, our peaceful presence is always expected. Am I communicating peace, tranquility, freedom from disturbance to my confreres, to my husband, to my wife, to my children, to my parents? Is peace existing in my life? Am I spirit filled? We also need to realize that the consequence of this Pentecost is the joy of Christ. As we would read in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 16, in his farewell speech, Jesus says to his disciples, For a while you will see me. After a while you will not see me. Yet again you will see me. The disciples were confused at the statement of Jesus. But in his statement, he was very clear about what he wanted to say. To see Jesus is to experience him, to experience his presence. According to the biblical language, to see is to experience. I remember one of the greatest orientation given to me by the late Reverend Father Anthony Mokadot. As my father died, he was there to participate in the funeral of my father. I was at the brink of tears at the loss of my father. This noble, old and exemplary priest of ours held his hands on me and told me, do not worry, from today on you have someone in heaven to intercede for you. Your father is present in the presence of God. See him, experience him, experience his love in your life. My brothers and sisters, Jesus tells, for a while you will see me. After a while you will not see me, yet again you will see me. He invites his disciples to see him through the experience that they make in their life. It's a challenging test of their discipleship. Have I seen the Lord? Has his spirit an impact in my life? Is the spirit of Jesus working in me? Therefore, every scene is handed on to us, an experience handed on to us through suffering. What did Jesus, the risen Lord, tell the disciples? Don't you believe in me? Come near me, see my hands and my side. Wounds that have been done on me. Only through suffering you can have the joy of the ascension and the Pentecost. Every pain leads to a joyful experience. There is no joy without tears. When we suffer in our families, when we suffer in our community life, when we have sicknesses and difficulties to overcome, remember the pain and the suffering as a mark on the joy that we would have in the Lord. It is not a desperate belief, it's a conviction of the Spirit of God. To see him, the wounded hands and the side of Jesus is a vocation for us to enter into the joy of new life. Therefore, there emerges the new responsibility. Chapter 20, verse 21 of the Gospel of John would say, Jesus telling his disciples, I send you as I was sent. The first apostle the world has ever seen is Jesus Christ. Jesus acknowledged his apostleship every time, referring back to his father and telling that, my father is the one who sent me. Therefore now, I take the responsibility, my children, to send you forward. An apostle is the one who is sent. The word apostle comes from the Greek root, apostolos, the one who is sent. But the credibility of an apostle is that the apostle has seen the Lord, the apostle has the grace of God. When you are sent, 
you need to realize you fulfill not your mission but jesus mission the work of the spirit has to be accomplished in and through you and that is the joy of religious life today that's the joy of christian family life today are you an apostle of jesus christ sent by him spirit filled proclaiming the word of god in the manner in which your master jesus christ lived it and how did he send the spirit into them as the gospel would say he breathed the spirit onto their life into their hearts this breathing had been always there it is the breath of god that had been moving through the humanity through the nature through the world we read it in the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 7 god created human being by being a person who breathes into his nostrils god's breath is our life without that breath of god the spirit of god that is being breathed into us we are dead we are lifeless we need this new spirit and now in the gospel of john chapter 20 verse 22 we see the renewed commitment that is expected of us the breath that was lost by sin through the sin of adam and eve is now once again renewed and we are now there is a new breathing given to us experience of the breath of christ in his spirit is the welcome gesture and we read it in the acts of the apostles today how this new breath makes a change in the humanity the galileans who were filled with the spirit of jesus the disciples of jesus christ when they opened their mouth they began to speak in tongues languages that they never spoke in their life had been infilled in them and all those people who came around from all over the world from mesopotamia from asia from phrygia from egypt from every part of the world each of them understood what they spoke in their own tongue what unites you today is the spirit the differences of your language the differences of your culture the differences of your caste or creed will never make a difference before god are you spirit filled are you able to understand the language of god and communicate that language to the humanity around you this is the choice that we have to make saint paul in the letter to the corinthians today tells us you are the body of christ a body has got different parts and each part has different responsibility but every responsibility is to be finally merged in the person of christ pentecost is the time to be renewed in the spirit of christ it is a new birthday for me and for you today shedding away my sins shedding away my fears from shedding away my anxieties and worries i accept the peace joy tranquility and the apostleship of jesus christ in my personal life i take jesus around the world a new pentecost has to begin in my community today through my presence and spirit filled animation and lifestyle may the spirit of jesus who comes into us today on this day the birthday of the church be the animating spirit of our personal and societal and church lifestyle i wish each of you the grace and the joy of the feast of pentecost god bless you amen